What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Check it out, we got a 2005, uh, yeah, I think it's 05 anyways, Suzuki King Quad uh, 700. Now this unit here, uh, I worked on his dad's uh, 1978, 1979, 1983, I don't know, I forget what year, but I had a, so excuse me, um, v uh, v Max, Yamaha V Max. Um, that came from another shop that actually had tore it all apart and then closed down, and he had to go through and pilfer through and find everything. And we got that thing up and running really nice. Uh, but this here, basically, what his problem is, he said basically what was going on. He is out for a ride on it, went to the neighbor's house, flying down the road, came back up the driveway, and all of a sudden, it died. He said he was on the gas, uh, flying down, just running like I said, it was running like a scalded dog, no problems at all. And all of a sudden it started bogging down slowly and died. Um, what it is, I don't know. You can hear the fuel pump prime. Uh, you can, I charged the battery on it already off camera before we started this. And I know the dash has an error code. Apparently they say that the, if the battery gets too low and you keep cranking on it and something happens to the dash in these things. I never heard that when I was working with Suzuki. Uh, I'm gonna look into it actually so I can give you guys a positive feedback on that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and plug into this thing with the SDS tool from Suzuki. Factory, it's the factory tool so we can read any stored codes and any new codes this thing may have. So uh, first I'm gonna do some research on that dash to see if that ERR, that error on the dash can be erased somehow or if it's actually shorted out the dash. They say that it shorts out the dash, so I wanna make sure that really happened. But we'll plug in this thing, read any history on the code so that gives us an idea what's going on or any stored codes now because there is no FI popping up on the dash so we can check out what's going on there. All right guys, so I did a little research online and yeah, what happens basically, they call it a, uh, an EE prompt chip and it goes bad. It's what uh, stores all your data for, they say your hours, your miles, uh, calculating a bunch of stuff. Um, basically it says, um, let's see. So the reason the EER is because the data stored on the EE prompt does not pass the CRC check. When this happens, it, it assumes that the data can no longer be trusted and doesn't store it. So the only way to fix it is to replace that chip and be smart enough to upload all your other stuff on it or get a new dash. So apparently it is a common problem. Never heard of it because I have never seen it. I never had problems to look it up. I'm sure it's on the uh, Suzuki uh, dealer site. You can take a look and see what's going on there. But so apparently when it gets low voltage or something like that and you keep cranking on it or whatever deal it is, it just takes a crap and shorts itself out. So yeah, you're pretty much out of luck unless you can solder a new one on and understand how to upload back to it. Uh, and again, that is basically what it's saying is no longer, no longer can process what's going on and doesn't tr trust the data being sent to it. So now you get the ERR code on there. Sucks, but it is what it is. But right now, let's jump in, pop the seat off, and hook up the SDS2 uh, and see what we get as far as stored codes. Very simple to get the seat off this thing. Pull the tab in the back, lift up. Like I said, I had already charged the battery, so I took the cross member off that goes here. Um, he did have a machete down there. He stores all that stuff. Right over here is your plug. So we'll go ahead. You can jump this uh, going from the white and red to the uh, black and white, I believe what it is. I care. I have other, other, other ones on this. It's been a while since I've had to do it. Actually, let's grab my other tool here. That way I can actually tell you which, which, one, which wire it is. Yeah, so basically to jump it, you can either get this tool here from Suzuki, which would jump the black and white and the white red. That's what I thought. And that'll display any codes up on the dash. This one here, when I plug it in, turn the key on. And basically what this tool, you basically you write a good unit and you store that into the memory. And then you can compare a good, a known good unit to a unit that you're having issues with. So you can check out like injector pulse, uh, throttle position, anything weird happening idle or riding at certain RPMs. So let's diagnose what's going on. Start with diagnosis. Now you can put in the VIN number and save it, or you can just go straight over to 
uh, continue right here, your enter button. I'll just enter, I'm not worried about that. And it'll do an automatic vehicle identification. And sometimes it takes a while, so bear with me here. And again, guys, I'm starting to shoot everything in 4K. I was doing 1080p and I didn't kind of like the graininess, so we're gonna try out some 4K. It's definitely gonna take me a lot longer to upload all the videos because there are multiple gigs for pretty short videos and clips and when I piece it all together. But uh, hopefully it, it's gonna start coming out a little bit sharper for everybody on TV, uh, shooting in 4K. I am using a my GoPro Hero 9 for this. I will eventually upgrade. We have finally hit 4,000 subscribers also, so that's pretty awesome. Let's go to engine and we'll go to DTC and spec, which is diagnostic trouble codes. Reading it, there are no current codes that so we have past error. All right, so we have had uh, P020-L, P0201, and P15, P1752, you can see that, I think. So first one is throttle position sensor A system malfunction. Second one is injector cylinder one malfunction, which this is a single cylinder. So it's just the injector. And differential lock relay circuit malfunction. Now, I'm not sure if some of these can come from a low battery. Sometimes the injector can, sometimes you get a DTC that shows low voltage, but that's what we got in there right now. I'm not gonna clear those out. We're gonna save that stuff. We're gonna go back and show failure data, reading failure data. And basically, let's see, relay, I'm more concerned with the fuel injector one, failure number two, click on that pre-detect it so it was about 2500 rpms at 31 percent throttle position engine coolant was at 80 89c so that's like 180 something degrees fahrenheit and he was in neutral when this happened all right let's see what else we got here detection point number two 2400 and neutral whoop details so detection point you guys can see all that it's pretty nice to have something like this you know if you can find a shop that's closed down like i did uh out in california um this is where i got that so let's go back and let's see we'll go back again let's see detection point fix point Let's see if it fixed itself where did it fix itself at so apparently it fixed itself that's where it fixed itself do i believe it probably not failure and failure all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and we're going to pull off all the junk that covers up the air box pull the air box off probably pull the injector out because I know the fuel pump primes pull the injector out and see if that injector's pulse is, is it pulsing and if not I'll stick it in my motion pro injection cleaner and we'll see if it's actually working or not um, and see if uh, we can get it to spray through that with some uh, injector cleaner all right guys I'm gonna try to do this here I'm gonna try to get you an angle I got the air box off you know just took this off took the air box out uh, air box intake sensor Map sensor, uh, crankcase, tube, vent tube, all that off. Airbox comes right out. 10, six by one oh, 10 mil head here, here, and up front. Comes right out really simple. So let's, I'll try to hold this open with my knee and we'll look in there and make sure the injector is pulsing. Now we can see it shooting. So we know, we know the injector's working. So let's go on and take the spark plug out We'll double check. Actually, I'm gonna make sure we're getting power up to the coil first. And then uh, we'll pull the spark plug out and take a look at that. Now he has mice, he has had mice in here, he said. So I'm looking, the reason I took this out, cause I wanted to make sure there's no broken wires anywhere down below. Uh, and I will look over this harness intently, trying to figure out why it's not firing up. Now we know we do have a little bit of issues there. So we're gonna get a new air cleaner for him. He said something about that. I know he said he said he had spark. He said he tried shooting starter fluid down the cylinder. Um, I forget what else he said he had done, but we're gonna do all of that anyways, check it all out and see if we can't figure it out. So I'm gonna yank that spark plug out 
We'll check that. We see the injector is shooting and pulsing and it's shooting a nice butterfly pattern into the throttle body. So let's pull that uh, spark plug out and see what's up. All right, well, for some reason, I'm not getting power on my test side to the coil. So I threw a plug in it and it's actually got great spark. I mean, we could have did that in the first place anyways, but let's, we can't get you down here to take a look. Spark. If, well, I mean, maybe. Maybe we'll get you some sparky spark. Why can't things just set where they need to set? Here, that should work. See, we got great spark. Let's check the spark plug. Like I said, I was going to do that I haven't done yet. <sighs> okay, here we go. All right, so spark plug pulled out. I don't know if you guys can see with that light behind me. Let's turn this way. It's pretty pretty black. I just checked the spark on it. It's very, 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 very weak. So I'm going to throw in a brand new CR6E. Is that what it is? Yeah. CR6E on this. This is an 07, not an 05. It's an 07 LTA 750X. Something like that. Anyways, so I'm going to throw a new spark plug in here and we'll try it and see if the thing fires off. All right. New spark plug is in. Let's bring it on to this side. Let's see. I'm not saying it's going to start, but let's see if it starts. It's just a spark plug issue. You. No freaking way. <laughs> All right, well. We're going to let it. We're going to let it idle for a minute. That's the old shitty spark plug. I mean, yes, I should have checked it first. By all means, usually I'll check fuel pressure. I'll check spark. But he said, that's what I get. Well, you know, it's what I get when I listen to some of the customers sometimes. Like, hey, I checked this, I checked that. And 99.9% .9 of the time, that is exactly where I start, especially with carburetors or throttle bodies. It's, oh, I had them rebuilt, or I did this, or I had another shop do this. They're perfect. You don't have to worry about that. That is the spot I always start. I should have started by looking at his spark plug even though he said it had good spark. My mind, you know, that he had already had it uh, changed out, you know. It had really, really horrible weak spark. It was just an old spark plug. So now I'm gonna put the air box back on. Uh, I'm gonna probably run up the road here to the Suzuki dealer and see if they have a air filter in stock. And if they do, I'll throw that air filter in. But I'm gonna put this thing back together. We'll go rip it around together. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully we're, uh, it's fixed kind of a shit crap video I guess but my apologies again I should have looked at the spark plug first I didn't I was just checking everything he said he checked and that is where I screwed up again I should have started where he said he ended or what he looked at that's where I should have started guys always start where the person said they left off or what they have touched you just never know what you're gonna find so we'll take this thing for a rip I'm gonna run up the road and see if the uh, dealership's got a uh, air filter for it and if not i have to order one and but we'll throw this one in there anyways and take it for a rip if they don't have one so guys sorry for the short video that's what i get for not doing what i'm supposed to do i mean i've got them 20 years into this stuff 20 i don't know i've been built, working on this stuff since i've been 12 years old it'll be 46 this year so yeah that's my fault it's over there running like a champ right now just idling away so uh Again, guys, we hit 4,000 subscribers last night, which was a July 24th. I've been doing this now for three years. I know I'm really slow in getting content out, man. My shop has just been slammed. It's me by myself. I got 20 or 30 units here, plus the race series was crazy busy the last couple months. Um, here for a week, gone for a week, here for a week, gone for a week. Now I got a little bit of time off, so I'll try to catch up on some videos. Um, a lot of stuff I have in the shop I'm not filming just because I need to get it in and out as fast as possible. Uh, it is riding season. Everybody wants something done. They want to drop it off today and had it fixed, and they wanted it fixed yesterday. So that's the way it goes. I appreciate every single one of you guys who subscribed to my channel. It makes me happy to see I have 4,000 subscribers for this and try to answer back all your emails. I try to answer back all your comments. Sometimes I miss it when I'm on the road and I forget about it when I get back because I'm so concentrated on getting things in and out of the shop. And again, guys, I really appreciate it very much. If I've helped you in the past, man, leave a super thanks. Uh, Brian, 
uh thanks for the two dollars super thanks um uh, on one of my videos i really appreciate that man i had another guy i forget what his name is it's been a while left me a 20 dollars super thanks guys you know any of that stuff helps me out puts money in, my, in the pocket and helps me keep doing what i'm doing because i'm gonna have to get a new camera here sooner than later because this gopro just keeps overheating the batteries are swelling up i have to get something a little bit nicer uh so i can zoom in and out i just you know want to make that a little extra money so i can do that you know that's what this channel is for to make a little extra cash to put back in to the channel uh so i can get you know a little more creative maybe you know have somebody eventually down the road we get a subscribers that films full time i don't know find out i would love love to have somebody here and just be able to film me on everything diag everything and edit for me that would be awesome i would love that if somebody wants to do it for free ha, cool let me know man you guys come over and check it out and hang out and film stuff and edit it and throw it on my channel i don't mind uh, again i have shirts in stock small medium large extra large 2x uh, I think I said 25 shipped and then I just got some hats in I got I think I have three hats left right now uh, I think the $30 shipped to you uh, just hit me up here drop a comment let me know and I'll give you my email or email me at limitlesspowersport78 at gmail.com find me on Facebook at limitlesspowersport78 oh no ha huh. I'm going back to my email limitlesspowersport service and repair TikTok at limitlesspowersport sir and rep and then all that's connected to my uh, Instagram so yeah um, guys Let's go take this thing for a rip. All right, guys, got the quad back together. No air filter. Uh, again, we're in my helmet, so this might be loud. Don't know. Uh, let me get my uh, gun off of here. All right, let's fire this thing up. Take a little rip around the yard and see how this thing runs. Hopefully you guys got a decent view. I don't know if you will or won't. Everything feels pretty good. I'll leave my mask open, my face shield open because it's a little loud. I don't have a whole bunch of area to run around, but we got a little bit. Woo! She spins up good because there ain't no tread on the tires. This is in high gear too. It just slides, no problem. This thing runs really, really well now. I don't think we're gonna have any problems out of this thing. Just a foul spark plug. Who knows when the last time he changed it was. I have no idea. Zero traction with these tires.
going to call this one done, fixed, and out of the shop. We do have a Banshee video coming up. It's got a coolant leak somewhere and the, thro uh, the throttle body. So carburetors are not synced together. It runs like Dookie. That one came from St. Louis. That's the same gentleman who had the GSXR 750 Yamaha Warrior. Don't worry about that stuff. Do have a video coming on that. We'll have one on this 2012 RM250. And that is it. You guys seen that one. There'll be a video out on the Milita here soon. T-Boss 410 and pr maybe this P Polaris Razor at the front end. I don't know. We'll see. You guys are probably pointing it up in the air the whole time. Probably didn't get a single thing on that. But the quad runs great. It's got zero, zero tread on the tires. Zero tread on the tires. Thing runs phenomenal. I'm sure the camera's probably pointed too high. I can never get the right angle because the camera's mounted on top of my old helmet. I need to get a nice chin mount or side mount for a good for a good preview. So we're gonna call that one fixed. Um, like I said, there's a few videos gonna be down the road here on these other ones. So again, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do drop some comments below. Again, I left all my socials before that. Uh, any questions about motorcycles, ATVs, UTVs, like again, uh, Limitless Power Sports at Gmail. Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair on Facebook. Limitless Power Sports Sir and Rep on TikTok. And you can find me on Instagram too. Uh, again, guys, I appreciate it for all the 4,000 plus subscribers on my channel. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you guys on my next upload.